The Gypsy King is one of those guys who is not scared of anything and he's not scared of saying anything. He'll say the funniest things in press conferences and I think he can fight. He probably is one of the best heavyweight fighters out there. Wild is a big banger. If he hits you, it's lights out. But I don't think he has been tested yet. Joshua is a very good fighter. He's very strong. Another fighter that's not been tested. I think out of the bunch of three names you mentioned, Fury is probably the best out of all three. Those are the words of Amir Khan assessing the current heavyweight landscape. In his view, Tyson Fury is probably the best. Interesting that he said that neither Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua have been tested yet. Bizarre, actually, because didn't Anthony Joshua fight Vladimir Klitschko? Didn't he have to get off the canvas after being hurt multiple times in the fight? Didn't he come back and score a late round knockout? Wasn't Deontay Wilder hurt by Luis Ortiz and had to dig deep and come back to knock Ortiz out? Where's Khan Bean? <laughs> he says the guys haven't been tested. I mean, Anthony Joshua has certainly been tested just as much as Fury has, if not more, if we're talking about at the highest level. He's been tested more than Fury. Fury's had one fight at championship level against Klitschko and he his skills were tested but his heart wasn't tested in that fight his chin wasn't tested in that fight just his skills and his skills passed with flying colors it has to be said but other than that Fury hasn't had any other fights at world level he fought Chisora twice Chisora is a gatekeeper he's not really a top 10 heavyweight at this point, anyway. I, I suppose he was at the time, to be 100% fair, played devil's advocate. But again, we all know what Shizora is. He's never going to be a world beater. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, Chizora. Who else is on his resume? Cunningham. A pumped up cruiserweight who'd seen better days. I mean, Fury's resume is thin, people. Where, where is... All these fights which Khan seems to be implying Fury's had where he's been tested. He hasn't been tested any more than Joshua has. Yeah, he's had to get up and he showed heart in certain fights, but they weren't at world level. But Joshua's had to show heart too, right? He was hurt in a Dylan White fight. He had to come through that. He was hurt in the Klitschko fight. And Tyson Fury was hurt against Nevin Pikage. He was hurt against Steve Cunningham. He had to come back. So, again, I don't see how... Tyson Fury has been any more tested than Anthony Joshua has. You know, I don't, I don't know where Amir Khan is going with that. As far as Tyson Fury, yeah, you could say. Uh, sorry, as far as Deontay Wilder, yeah, you could say uh, he hasn't been tested as much as Fury has, but he's still been tested. His skills were tested against Stavern because he had to box that fight and stay disciplined. And his heart and chin were tested against Luis Ortiz. And his skills were tested against Ortiz. So, you know, maybe he hasn't been tested as much as Fury has, but he has been tested. So I'm not sure where Khan is going with it. The only thing I'll say is, could Fury be the best out of the three? Potentially, yes, he could be. It remains to be seen. He has to get in there and actually fight these guys. But... Would I be shocked if Fury turned out to be better than Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua? Absolutely not. He's obviously got skills which those guys don't have. Obviously. He can fight Southpaw. He's very slick. He's a good counter puncher. He's got a ridiculously long reach. He's taller than both guys. He can box on the back foot very, very well. He can come forward. He's a very well-rounded heavyweight, Tyson Fury. When he's at his best, when his mind and his body are in the right place. So, you know, I'm not discounting the idea that he could be the best of the three. But I'm just arguing some of the points that Amir Khan made there. Saying that the, those two guys haven't been tested. I mean, I don't know where he's going with that. Particularly Joshua, he's been tested. 
and he's come through. So anyway, perhaps Khan is still salty. <laughs> I know this is what some people are going to say anyway, so let me just say it for you. Perhaps Khan is still a little bit salty about the situation with Joshua and Khan's spouse. You know, because Khan made a donut of himself in that situation. He implied that Joshua had been carrying on with his wife and you know maybe his wife uh said certain things or sent certain tweets or whatever it was or was it instagram comments which made it look as though or maybe it was whatsapp messages i can't remember now it's a long time ago since that whole scandal went down maybe she said certain things to deliberately wind a mirror up Maybe there was nothing behind it. Then again, maybe there was. I don't know. But perhaps Khan is feeling a little salty about that. Maybe he's not. I'm just throwing it out there. I had heard, and I think Eddie Hearn kind of implied this as well, that Anthony Joshua actually threatened, or, or his team behind the scenes threatened legal action against Khan unless they got an apology. I had heard this, okay, I can't confirm that it's 100% true, but I do remember Eddie Hearn, I think, kind of alluding to this, that Team Joshua had actually threatened Khan with legal action if he didn't apologize and retract what he'd said. So, you know, maybe there is still some slight ill feeling between Khan and Joshua. Then again, maybe there's not. I know they did reconcile after the fact I think they did meet up or they at least spoke on the phone and they reconciled uh, but you, you never know man you never know what kind of ill feeling can linger on because Amir Khan and Carl Frotch reconciled a few times but there was still ill feeling long after the fact between those two perhaps Khan is looking at Joshua's success and he's wishing he was in that position in terms of the adulation from the fans. You see the thing about Khan is. This is prize fighting. And Khan likes to make big purses and whatnot. But Khan is. In my. Perception of him. Is he's a very egocentric. Fighter. And many fighters are egocentric. All right, Many of them are macho and, and whatnot. This is what motivates a lot of their. Careers. Uh, to a large degree. But with Khan, I think it's even more so. You know, Khan loves the limelight. He's one of those kind of guys who loves the limelight. He loves the crowd cheering for him. He loves all that kind of thing. It, it really gives him a massive buzz and puts him on a massive high. There are some fighters out there, believe you me, people, who actually don't give a damn about the, cheer, the cheering and the adulation of the fan. They don't care. They literally don't care. All they want to do is get paid, go home, and be with their families and stuff like that. They really don't care about all the adulation from the fans. It really don't do anything for them. They're just focused on the fight, and they block all the fans out. Khan is not that kind of guy. Khan is the kind of guy who loves all the celebrity stuff. He loves the fans adoring him and cheering him on and giving him. <laughs> Khan, he laps all that kind of thing up. And perhaps when he sees Joshua getting all that, to a level he's never had it at. Because rem remember, Khan's been talking about filling out stadiums. When Joshua filled out Wembley for the Klitschko fight, Khan was like, yeah, me and Brooke could do that. Me and someone else could fill out Wembley. You know, maybe that's what it's all about. Maybe there is maybe a, a slight touch of envy, maybe, for Khan when he looks at Joshua. I don't know. Just putting it out there. Let me know how you feel in the comment section, people. It's happening. I'm out.